What's up everyone? Today we are thinking and talking about a question that is asked a lot and that is what should I start with for my first mountain bike? And this question can go a lot of places and a lot of answers to it because it's not as simple as saying start with the entry level $500 one and build your way up from there. You can start entry, you can start mid, you can start kind of high end. I myself started on a box store bike. It worked out well till it broke, as they do. And then I skipped right up to a full suspension model from Trek. And that's a huge gap. That is, you know, less than $300 to $2,000 plus. It's a big jump. And I'm gonna help clarify why you should pick a certain bike over another and hopefully this will help you out so let's get to it subscribe if you like this kind of content okay so firstly you will start somewhere here most like in the hardtail section this is for someone who is really beginning out but you don't have to stop there you don't have to just because you're not into mountain biking you haven't done it before start at the entry level once some of the benefits of going to something like this is one the price these things can range from seven hundred dollars all the way up to well now about four thousand dollars for a really good hardtail the entry level ones though you're looking around the seven to twelve hundred dollar mark to get a really good mountain bike now i'm not saying that you have to choose these ones particularly being the norcos or treks or whatever all i'm directing is to why you might lean this way so when you look at a hardtail mountain bike, big, big factor which wins over a lot of people is the price. When you're that low entry, it's a lot easier to kind of waste that money. If you're unsure you're gonna like this sport, you don't really wanna be throwing away thousands of dollars on these products. But when you do that, you get a better mountain biking experience and that is a downside to buying these. So there's tons of options out there. Something like the Trek Marlin 5 is a hugely popular one. It's what created this channel essentially with over 150,000 views just comparing the Trek Marlin 5 lineup. It's a pretty popular bike to say the least. Now, with things like these, you're gonna look at multiple chain rings on the front, less on the back in comparison to what most would consider trail bike features or check boxes which you might hit looking for a trail bike. The benefit to these is they do offer a very simple switch from easy to hard. The more gears you have that front, the easier it is to switch back and forth from a very easy gear to a very low gear and get into a very quick pedaling speed or very easy pedaling speed. They now are coming stock with very good brakes, hydraulic disc brakes. You know, high-end bikes 10, 15 years ago may even have rim brakes. You're getting hydraulic disc with an entry-level one, so there's no worry there. As you go through any lineup of, of mountain bikes, it gets blurred lines. There's a lot of very small steps to it. You look at motorcycles, there's like a 250 and there's a 450, and that's about it. There's now the X models, so they're a little more enduring, but otherwise, they're very, very simple. Mountain bikes, they have literally every step from basic entry level to top the line. It's a really interesting category, to be honest, now I think about it. You don't see PlayStation offering that. Xbox does offer a base model and a high-end model. That's still only two models, when there's hundreds of millions of people who buy these products. Mountain biking is a growing sport, but still has so much more option, it's almost confusing. As you go up, even in the entry level hardtails, you get some really high specs and some fancy features. All right, as you go up, in the world of mountain biking and entry-level bikes, you leave this, I'd say, under $1,400 Canadian price point. So you're about $1,200 or less American kind of price point. And these are the true entry-level bikes. They work, they'll do all the trail riding, they'll have a mixture of, you know, good parts, medium parts, easy gears, lots of gears, no gears. It's a, it's a different mixed bag. As you go above that level, things get a little more simple, honestly. You're spending, you know, let's say a $2,000 price point, but what are you getting for that? It's a little tricky to make a video like this because there is no bikes. There is still a bike shortage, but when you jump up to these 2,000 to say $3,000 bikes, you're still getting a herd tail now. They're getting a little more slack geometry. The benefit to things like these is you're gonna get lower price of entry, so 2,000 plus, 
the slack of geometry and better trail riding geometry means it's going to actually be easier to ride on a trail. And whether that's climbing or going downhill, these bikes are designed for off-road use and off-road efficiency. You get a lot of features which high-end bikes now get. And this is the one gear on the front and 12 gears on the back becoming a more standard thing. That is a, a go-to mountain biker. You're researching what you're looking for. That's what they're after. You're also getting much better suspension and better brakes. Again, so these are small incremental changes, but it's a big step overall. From that entry level, $1,400 or less, above that point, you get a trail bike. And from there, you're really set forever. You don't need a better one, but there is better ones, and you can get better ones. Your next step after that, it's a pretty quick jump, is to a full suspension model. And these things are now starting around the $3,000 and up range, and you're getting full suspension. Honestly, not too much change otherwise. If we look at the Trek Roscoe series now, they are honestly a Fuel EX, so a full suspension model with hard tail features. So that's no suspension on the rear and front has suspension. It makes it really simple. So we've kind of blasted through the models and the styles. You have the entry level hardtail, you have the mid to high end hardtail, and then it goes to full suspension, kind of the top of the line, the king of all the mountain bikes. Generally speaking, that's how it goes. Obviously from there you get really specific into full suspensions or hardtails on you know, dirt jump and all that stuff. But we're just talking all purpose general trail biking, the ones which do everything. And that is what most people ride. So which is right for you? The entry level ones will come with a nice low price point, which will still be capable off road. That being said, they are also very capable on road for an efficient kind of feeling ride, which honestly is a downside in the off road thing. When you jump up to the mid level ones, you get a much, much, much better ride experience off road, smaller price point um, than a full suspension, but you still investing two plus thousand dollars into it which is pretty good actually i started on a two thousand dollar full suspension and that worked out really well i could still ride it today and honestly the two thousand dollar hardtails which are available today uh blow that one out of the water i had three gears on the front nine on the back terrible the geometry would have been terrible smaller wheels so don't think oh the prices have gone up and i'll never be able to find a bike like that you you're getting so much better of a bike than I ever started on that if you join in and get like a Roscoe 7, you have a bike which will just destroy trails, honestly. Then you go to the full suspension. The full suspension is where the ride gets really bumpy, but it actually smooths out. You actually get a smoother ride, but they, they kind of restart the whole system. You have the entry level ones, and then they start getting to the ridiculous part specs where you're getting carbon fiber frames, carbon wheels, and these are small but effective upgrades. They will get better and better. They will work better, but you may notice them smaller and smaller amounts as a first bike. What do I recommend? Honestly, you can't go too wrong with anything. With the entry level hardtails, you can ride anywhere and do anything really, really well. If you jump up and bite the bullet to spend about $2,000, you are getting a very, very good trail bike now. You have no issues with it. It will work well, it will perform well, and honestly, it's not a crazy amount of money. It'll do everything you need, and you know, it's a lot of money, but it's not a crazy amount of money. When an entry-level bike is, you know, $700 now, to double it and a half, a little bit, give rough math, it's pretty solid, and like I say, this is a bike which honestly will do everything a high-end full suspension will do in the same category. Then you go to the full suspensions, which you're paying for that premium feel. It's going to be more comfortable. The braking is going to get better. And if you know you're going to really put in some kilometers and you want a bit more comfort, it's going to be worth spending that extra $1,500 on top of $2,000, so $3,500 to get a really comfy one, it's worth it. If you're gonna put in the kilometers and you want that comfort, that's where the full suspension will come in. I don't think until you start spending four plus thousand that you're really gonna see a huge part and a performance benefit in a full suspension. That's why I'd recommend starting comfort-wise 
and then see if you like it, then upgrade, or go with a hardtail, and honestly, it'll work great. They'll come with a dropper post, they'll still be really good geometry, the gearing is gonna be great. Honestly, I don't know how many times I can say honestly. It's kind of too many in this video, I feel. You can't go wrong today. Start where your budget says it. If you think or want to commit to it, I would highly recommend pushing into a $2,000 price point. They're gonna work, it works really well. The part specs are out of this world compared to even 10 years ago. These bikes are phenomenal and you're really gonna enjoy it. The full suspensions, you really are just paying for a little bit of comfort there and like, yeah, there's braking benefits and all this stuff, but if you're an entry-level rider, you gotta really be technical and quick learning to really take advantage of the full suspension stuff, apart from the comfort and kind of ease of use of it. You know, it's gonna be more forgiving, not as much rattle throughout the whole bike. So there's a little details which will help, but overall, you'll be able to ride a bike no matter what. Overall, you'll be able to ride a bike no matter what price point you spend. Like I say, I started on a box store one, Rode it until it broke and fell apart and then just upgraded straight away. Didn't take me long before I knew it. It might depend on your background, where you came from, motocross, or just already an athletic person. So you can kind of overpower the smaller, easier bikes quite easily. You know, if you're a very fit physical person, the small, easy rings on the two by system, you're just not ever gonna need. You may as well go to the better 12 by systems and there you go, you're back in that $2,000 price point. All right, you can talk about this forever. Overall, no matter what bike you choose, you're gonna have a good bike these days. I'm leaning towards recommending a lot of people to the mid-level hardtail. They're getting every checkbox you could possibly have on a mountain bike, but with a lower price point. And essentially all I'm missing is that rear suspension, which definitely helps, but it's definitely not the end of the world if you don't have it. All right, guys, hopefully this was helpful to you, guiding you a little bit towards where you should look. Check out all my videos if you're interested in a particular Trek bike. I do have some Norcos and Santa Cruz on there. Wish I had more, but with the bike shortage, it's just hard to get on them. And I lost a bunch of footage for all the ride videos, so that's great news. Hopefully winter will end here and we can get on a new bike, which I have here with me. This is it, this is mine. I've actually changed. I've actually downgraded. I have gone from a Fuliex 9.8 and I've switched it to the Fuliex 8. So this is going from like an $8,000 carbon fiber everything model to aluminum $5,000 model. So it'll be very interesting to see if I notice a difference. When I switched up, I did notice a huge difference in handling and twitchness and feel. It'd be interesting if I go back down whether I'm gonna see a big difference in feel. And uh, yeah, you know, honestly, we'll find out. Comment Fuliex 8 if you made it this far, cause that's cool. I do recognize all you people who comment often and watch my videos, I appreciate it. I think it's cool and uh, I guess it helps me out. I'm not exactly sure why, but it gives me inspiration to keep going. Sure. All right, guys, good luck. We'll see you out there. This is a good spot. <laughs> this is a terrible spot. I'm not straddling something.